the the first thing that we're going to do today is look at the camera settings. So you can kind of see over here in the perspective view that we can float around in space, right? We can position our camera far away or really close. We can get inside the model. Um, but that is actually a camera and it's simulating the way that a camera would actually be used in space all the way down to the way that you can light a model. Um, so what happens is the X and the Y axes are usually aligned with your east and your north direction. So basically if you look at it like it's a map looking this way, um, this is east and that's typically north. That's the way the software calculates things. So when you think about the light in the software, usually it's coming from like the southwest or the southeast. I think that I think Rhino defaults to the southwest. I forget exactly, but um, that's when you're using what's called global um, illumination, right? So it's just a global light that uh, lights the space and it gives you a basic, um, like a basic shade and shadow study. So when you jump into say your rendered viewport right here that's what you're seeing. So this is a rendered viewport. It's just giving you a simple shade study. Um, and so this is part of what we're going to study um, and use as a part of our design process as well. Yes. Yes, I am. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so let's jump back to a uh, shaded viewport. Um, but what I'm going to do here is show you how to control the camera in a more meaningful way first. So let's get started by understanding um, what the camera actually is. So uh, Rhino, right now if I zoom out, say in the top view, you can't really see much. Um, it, it's just my model elements and the coordinate plane and you don't know where the camera is. Right now my camera is somewhere inside my building or very, very close to it, but I can't see it here in the plan view. I need to turn it on. So I type in camera and it's a very simple tool. There's only a couple of ways of, of changing it here. It's just turn it on or turn it off basically. So camera and then S to show it means that the camera is going to be shown. So depending on which view you have active, that camera is going to change. Um, I don't know why it went to the top view. Why did it choose that camera? Oh, because that's the, sorry. Um, that is the view that I had active at the time. So let me turn the, um, let me go to the top view and type in camera and hide it and go into perspective and type in camera and show. There we go. So um, you won't be able to see much of it while I'm, let me zoom out on the other views as well. Um, so anyway, as I'm moving the, the camera around here, uh, just a sec. So anyway, as I move my camera around, what you can see is that this object is moving as well. So let's take a look at the anatomy of what this object is, right? So here I'm, I'm looking through my, uh, my slate of pieces and down into my model. And so what you're seeing over here is my, my slate of pieces and my model right there next to the origin. So that tells you that this point right here is the camera's position in space. So I can actually pull that up and down and you can see that the perspective view will change as well. So this gives you a much larger degree of control over where your camera is positioned. So um, it's just a way of, of I guess, really controlling um, where, where it's going to be and, and what kind of pans and zooms you might want to try, right? So if you need to be eye level, you're going to want to slide this camera back and forth this way um, and then make sure that it is level here in this view. Does that make sense? Um, additionally, you can change uh, this camera point right here. If I recall correctly, this is your focal length. Um, that's a bit of a, or no, this is just your position, I think. Um, but all of these points are controllable. So you're able to mess around with whatever, um, I don't know, 
Oh, that's your field of view. Yeah. Um, so anyway, what the, basically what I want you to get in the practice of doing is understanding specifically where your camera is, if it's inside the space or outside the space, um, and then what your what your field of view is. So um, most of the time you won't need to turn it on, but sometimes you'll want to. So just be aware of that tool. So I'm going to hide that again. All right. So, um, so outside of showing the camera and knowing where it is, there the other feature is is that I want you guys to be able to save a particular camera view, right? So, um, it's just locking it in, giving it a name, so that you can go back to the position that you put that camera in in the first place. So, um, for me, real quick, let's say. Um, this is what I would consider the perfect view, right? For whatever reason. Um, so this little button up here, the name that says perspective has a ton of functionality built into it. And the one that I want you to first be aware of for this is when you right click it, you have, you can obviously change all the different settings here. So I can go back to that rendered view I mentioned to you. Um, or I can keep it shaded. But um, down here under set view, there's a feature called named views. So right above that, you see you know top, bottom, left, right, all the ones that you can jump to and fro um, that you're familiar with already. But named views brings up this dialog box that allows you to call this view whatever you want to call it. And in order to create a new one, um, you have to go to Save As, and then just give it a name. So I'm going to call this something like Interior Corridor 6 feet, right? Because I'm standing at about 6 feet high. Um, I'm positioning myself inside the interior corridor, even though I don't really have one right now. Set view, right? Set view yes. Um, so that shows up here in this little menu. Now, the coolest thing about this is that when I close it, and after I you know, move around and I no longer have that view anymore, it still says interior corridor, but it's not really on the interior corridor view. I right-click the name and I go to set view, and it's down here uh, at the bottom of that list. All of your named views are gonna show up. And so you just click on that and it'll bring me right back to the interior quarter view. So who can take a wild guess as to why this is so important? What's that? Why would you need to recall views at specific times? Yeah, but okay, so best parts of your render to get the right angle, meaning correct angle? Oh. It's not geometry class. <laughs> um, no, so, well, yes, all of those answers, yes, they're correct, but the really, really important thing is you can get a render to not be in exactly the same place and look like it's exactly the same image, but when you start to blend your raster imagery, which means the actual image it produces, with vector work, like line work that you're exporting from the software, it becomes incredibly difficult to get the two to mesh properly and look like it was produced well if you don't lock in exactly where the camera uh, oh, is like, and where it's facing. That's like continuity in film. Like, you have to, like if you're filming a scene, you have to kind of always shoot from that same angle or else it'll look funny. Right, yeah. Precisely, yeah. So if you're going to take two different cuts and you're going to try to mesh them together later, your camera needs to be in exactly the same place from one shot to the next or something like that. So um, so anyway, uh, yeah, so we're going to be locking in views like this, and we'll talk about that a little bit more going forward, but we need to understand a little bit more about camera angles first. Um, but we'll do that in just a moment. Are there any questions so far? No? All right. 